this is the June 2011 BY1 paper. Uh, we're looking at question number seven, uh, which is on uh, osmosis in plants. Uh, it's quite a short question, okay, uh, there's only three parts to it, and uh, it's worth a total of seven marks. Now, the um, critical part about this question is that you have to understand a certain concept in uh, osmosis in plants, okay. Uh, without that, uh, you will definitely lose at least three marks in this question, which is just too much to lose in an exam. Okay, you can't afford to be losing three marks. Uh, so just emphasize in there that you need to really study hard uh, in your A-level biology uh, to make sure you have absorbed and understand all the key concepts uh, for each topic. Okay, so let me read the question out to you and uh, we can then start to tackle uh, the, the answers. So, uh, a student carried out an investigation on the solute potential of a plant tissue. The tissue was placed in a sucrose solution that had a water potential of minus 600 kilopascals. Very important to uh, highlight that. Okay, the examiner has given you a piece of information and uh, it is probably there to help you answer the question okay and he's even told you that the plant tissue was left for one hour uh, in this uh, sucrose solution okay uh, the diagram below shows one cell after that time okay so that is the uh, appearance of the cell uh, after an hour uh, being placed in a solution of minus 600 kilopascals water potential now, to the next essential piece of information the examiner has given you. Approximately 50% of the cells showed signs of plasmolysis. The other 50% did not. If you don't know or understand what that statement means, you will definitely lose three marks in this question. Okay, because that uh, is vital to actually understanding what's going on here. Okay, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just answer part A uh, to start with. It's uh, it's a one word uh, answer really, and then we can concentrate on uh, the more difficult aspects of uh, this question. Okay, uh, so part A is just asking you to label structure J uh, on the diagram. All right, uh, so structure J is actually the cell uh, membrane. You can call it the plasma membrane if you wish. And you can actually see it pulling away uh, from the cell wall. So I can tell you now that, that label K is actually the cell wall. All right, so if you weren't able to identify uh, the, the features in that plant cell, you would also find uh, the question difficult because the appearance of that cell is also um, an aid to understanding and uh, answering the, the question. Okay, uh, so we'll type in the answer there for J, which is the uh, cell uh, membrane. Okay, so I've typed in the answer there uh, for label J, which is the cell membrane. Okay, now uh, let's scroll down to part B. Uh, this is the uh, part of the question now that if you don't understand the key points of osmosis in plant cells, uh, you'll most definitely lose three marks. Okay, uh, so let me read the question for you. The student concluded that the solute potential of the cell contents was minus 600 kilopascals. Explain why you think the student reached that conclusion. All right, so let me scroll back up to the main body of the question. And just to remind you that the examiner has already told you that the sucrose solution the plant cell was uh, submerged in had a water potential of minus 600 kilopascals. And you were then told that the student thinks that the uh, water potential, okay, inside, sorry, the solute potential, sorry, inside the cell contents 
was minus 600 kilopascals. Okay, so how on earth did the student reach that conclusion? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the um, the notes that accompany the app uh, in a moment, uh, but if you look at this important statement again, I want to highlight it to you again. Approximately 50% of the cells showed signs of plasmolysis. The other 50% did not. Okay. Now, that's the key to this because there's a little rule that you need to remember in osmosis in plants, and it's this. When you have 50% plasmalized cells, and the other 50% are not plasmalized, i.e. turgid, that is the point of incipient plasmolysis. And when you have incipient plasmolysis, the pressure potential inside that cell is zero. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up um, the notes um, that accompany the app then. All right. Um, so really, uh, from this uh, this page onwards, is dealing with um, sort of incipient plasmolysis and and the important relationships you need to remember. All right. So key concept I've got there: the pressure potential can create a water potential of zero kilopascals inside the plant cell, despite despite the cell protoplast being a solution and hence having a negative water potential. All right, so this is the, the start of the section that we need to uh, be concerned with. Okay, uh, so I just want to scroll down to this graph, all right, which you need to be familiar with. All right, and here is the important relationship. If I circle it, at incipient plasmolysis, which occurs when 50% of the cells are turgid and 50% of the cells are plasmalized, Okay, you have a water, uh, sorry, a pressure potential of zero, and the water potential is equal to the solute potential. All right, so that's the key thing uh, to remember there. All right, now I also want to scroll down um, uh, a fair way down actually through the notes where I looked at a number of graphs. That's one graph we looked at, but that's not relevant for the question we're looking at okay this is the one that we're interested in osmosis practical where your dependent variable is the percentage percentage plasmalized cells okay and uh, if we scroll down a bit further we can actually see this important graph i've drawn in for you all right and this is all to do with 50 percent plasmalized cells all right, so it's the graph uh, that you should be familiar with before you tackle these questions. It's where I looked at 50% plasmalized cells, drew, uh, or drew a line from the y-axis across to the curve, drew a line down to the x-axis, and I read off the concentration of uh, sucrose. All right, so that graph was looking at the concentration of, of sucrose that gave... Um, 50% plasmalized uh, cells. Okay. Right. Uh, so that's the section of the notes that you need to be uh, familiar with. Okay. Uh, so let's just go back to that, uh, the question. Okay. And I just want to highlight now the, uh, the, the sort of important responses here. Um, you would have got a mark for mentioning that 50% plasmalized cells is the point of incipient plasmolysis okay that would have got you the mark so you needed to appreciate and understand and remember that uh, concept there okay uh, the next mark that would be allowed is uh, is something i've already told you is that the pressure potential at incipient plasmolysis is zero okay critical to remember that uh, marking point there okay now uh, the other thing that's happening when you have incipient plasmolysis is uh, if you remember when we were looking at the notes just a moment ago the water potential inside the cell is equal to the solute potential okay so that means that there's actually an equilibrium that has been reached okay so 
at incipient plasmolysis, there will be no net movement of osmosis. Now, a little key important tip here for you. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an idea I've brought up in other questions, but whenever you have an equilibrium established, okay, and we're looking at movement of substances, in this case we're looking at the movement of water, so when you have this equilibrium, osmosis hasn't stopped, it's just that it is occurring at a constant rate back and forth. So you actually get no net movement of water, all right, but osmosis is still occurring, all right. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that uh, you can bring out uh, in your answer here as well, okay. Now, the other key thing that I want to emphasize is because there's no net movement of water, all right, what you can say is this, at incipient plasmolysis, the solute potential inside the cell, which you are told is minus 600 in this, in this instance, that is equal to the uh, uh, solute potential of the solution outside because this is incipient plasmolysis. All right, so that's why the minus 600 kilopascals here in part B links in with the minus 600 water potential at the top. Uh, okay, so basically the sucrose solution and the um, solution inside the cell, okay, um, actually have equal um, values, okay. And that fits in with the concept there of, of there being a, a equilibrium because whenever you have an equilibrium, you have equal, uh, in this case, water potentials, or if we were looking at a diffusion of a gas or something, we'd have equal concentration radiance, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's quite important to remember there. Equal, um, uh, there's, a, there's a dynamic equilibrium occurring at incipient uh, plasmolysis. Okay, I, I, you know, I've, I've mentioned quite a few important points here, all right, but remember the, the idea and um, rationale behind these exam technique videos is, is to highlight where the, uh, what you should know links in with the question, and I'm trying to help you guide you through the question and, and get you the full marks, okay? Um, this, this, the aim of these videos is not to help you understand the concepts, that's um, for you to do by looking through the notes, and also for me to do in the other video tutorials uh, where I take you through key concepts, okay? So if you don't quite follow, uh, what I've mentioned here. Uh, just have a look at the video tutorials on osmosis, all right, and, and hopefully there, uh, where I explain fully uh, the concepts of osmosis, you'd uh, understand uh, the, this topic a little bit more, okay? So I just hope that I've guided you uh, into the question appropriately there and showed you how to get the marks and where the key information is uh, within the question. Okay, so, so I've typed in uh, an answer there that uh, will get you uh, the three marks, all right? Now, uh, there are other uh, answers that you could have put in there, all right? As I've mentioned, you, you could have said that uh, the solid potential inside the cell is equal to outside, okay, which is, of course, minus 600 kilopascals, okay? Uh, I would have written that in, but uh, I'm running out of space uh, uh, there. All right, but I'll bring up the mark scheme in a moment, and you can see the full range of responses the, the examiner would have accepted. But, but that is an answer there that would have got you uh, three marks, okay? Right, uh, if we uh, scroll down then to part C, which is the last part, you're asked to explain the role of structure K in generating pressure potential in the cell, okay? Um, so basically this question is looking really not at a plasmalized cell or not a cell in incipient plasmolysis because there is no pressure potential 
uh, in those states. So it's really looking at a cell now that's uh, uh, turgid. Okay, so it's slightly different now to the uh, part B of the question. So you needed to realize that, that the examiner has moved on to another uh, aspect of osmosis here. Um, so part uh, or label K, uh, you should have known as the cell wall. Okay, now this is a very typical question that the examiner brings up in uh, osmosis implants. And if you don't remember the, the role of the cell wall, okay, you, you're likely to lose marks. And, and again, there's three marks up for grabs here. Okay, uh, so just remember, we, we've tackled uh, this type of question before, so I'll run through the key points of this. Basically, the cell wall uh, is uh, is inelastic, it won't stretch, uh, okay. Um, so what happens is when uh, water moves into the plant cell by osmosis, the, the whole cell content expands, the, uh, the, the cytoplasm expands, the vacuole expands, okay, and basically the, the cell uh, contents press against the cell wall, okay, and uh, when this uh, uh, pressure or contents are pushing against the cell wall, the cell wall doesn't stretch because it's uh, it's inelastic, uh, you actually then get this pressure generated uh, within the cell. Okay, uh, so I'll type in an answer there, and uh, then we'll have a, a little look at the mark scheme. There you go. So uh, I've typed in an answer there. I've said as water enters the cell by osmosis, the cell contents will expand and push against the cell wall. Okay, so I just want to highlight that. That's an important term to mention, push against the cell wall, okay? And also water enters the cell by osmosis. Don't just say the water will enter the cell. Please remember to state it's by osmosis. Lastly then, I've said this will generate a pressure potential as the cell wall will not stretch, okay? it's an, As I said, it's an inelastic uh, structure, okay? Um, with, uh, within the cell. Okay, so that's uh, that's the uh, answers to those questions. I hope you follow how I've tackled the question there, and I hope you realise the the knowledge that you must have uh, stuck in your brain in order to tackle this question. All right. So uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, the mark scheme then. Uh, pretty straightforward, I think. So part A, you have to label. Uh, the cell membrane there. Okay, part B now is the big N. Uh, this is where you needed to know all the key concepts. There's 50% of the cells look, point of incipient pl plasmolysis. Okay, uh, you got there the pressure potential is uh, zero. Um, you could have said that um, the, uh, the, the, the cell has reached the point of incipient plasmolysis because of the time the cell was left in the solution. It's left for an hour, all right? So that gave sufficient time for the, um, the plant cell to uh, produce the change that the examiner was telling you about. There you have equilibrium reached, no net movement of water, okay? And uh, you could have said then the solute potential inside the cell is equal to that outside. All right, that's the bit I think I left out of my answer because I didn't have enough room. All right, so uh, you could have mentioned that. And then uh, outside solution has a minus 600 kilopascal uh, value. All right, uh, so there's the marking points there. Now, as, as I've said before, I haven't put all those marking points in, in the answer because I've run out of room, uh, but I have told you about them. All right, I made you aware of them. Okay. Uh, moving on to part C then, this is to do with the uh, the pressure potential inside the cell. Uh, so the cell wall then is inelastic, won't stretch. Uh, the cell contents will expand. Okay. Uh, water moves into the cell. Now look, the, the examiner hasn't put here that you had to mention osmosis, but I think it's, it's good practice to do so. Okay. Um, you get the cell contents pushing against um, the uh, the cell wall, okay, and the pressure potential is generated 
by resistance of the cell wall. Okay, um, so there's the uh, uh, marking points for part C. Okay, so uh, that's the end of uh, question seven.